Here we have a problem that is a central limit theorem problem. And the reason we can see that it's a central limit theorem problem is because it looks an awful lot like a problem that would use the shade normal. Except in this problem, there's mention of the sample of 25. So that anytime you have a problem that mentions sample size, you should think in terms of the central limit theorem. And the formula that we're going to be using is the formula that you see here. It looks like the z-score formula, except there's the additional mention in the formula of sample size m. And what we do is actually take the square root of the sample size n and use that to divide into the standard deviation of the population. So here we have the sample size n, the sample in this case 25. The z-score formula, of course, also mentions the mean and standard deviation of the population. And then there's the x, which is the x mentioned in this problem, which is the less than $22. So here the mean that's mentioned is the mean of $25. The standard deviation is the standard deviation of the population that's given. In this case it's $15. And here the x in the formula is the amount given by the phrase less than $22. We'll also talk in this video about what happens when it's greater than or when it's between two different values. The thing that's important to recognize in the z-score formula is that there are two sets of parentheses, one in the numerator and another set in the denominator. Inside the square root of n, there's also another set of parentheses. This is important to realize because we're going to be putting this into the TI-83 using those specific sets of parentheses, and it's important to include them all. So now going to the TI-83 and using the formula that you see on the left as the template for what we're going to be doing. We'll start with the parentheses. Then the x number in this case is the single number 22. Now the blue subtraction sign. The mean given in this problem is 25. And now we're going to end the parentheses and now divide by. And again, here it's important for the denominator to include another set of parentheses for the operation in the denominator. And now the standard deviation of 15. And now this is divided by the square root. And to get the square root, we'll use the yellow second key and the square root over the x squared key. And now we'll put in the number in the sample. Now here, of course, the square root of 25, I'm sure you knew was 5, but we'll put in the 25. And now notice that we're going to need two parentheses, ending the square root parentheses, and then ending the parentheses for the denominator. And now when we hit enter, we have the z-score which is negative 1. These z-scores, when they turn out to be decimals, should be rounded to the second or hundredths decimal place. In this case, it's not necessary to round because we have negative 1. We're going to use that in the shade normal function. And again, to get the shade normal function, we'll go to the yellow second key, to the distribution button, then to the draw menu and simply select enter to bring out the shade normal. We want to shade the area that is below 22 in this distribution of sample means. So we will use the negative E99. That's the engineering exponent. So to get that, we'll again go to the second key and then to the engineering exponent which is over the comma, and we see the little e come up. The engineering exponent is 10 to some power, and the calculator understands infinity as e to the 99th power. So here we have negative infinity, or negative e to the 99th. We'll use the comma, and now negative 1. And again, that is the gray negative button, and the number 1. And we can either close the parentheses or not. It doesn't matter in this command. And when we hit enter, we have the normal distribution being shaded. And we see that our area is given as a decimal and that decimal is 0.158655. We're instructed to give our answer rounded to four decimal places, 
So to four decimal places, this will be 0.1587. Again, going to the fifth decimal place to round the fourth decimal place. And again, the rule for rounding is that if the fifth decimal place is five or more, then the fourth decimal place will go to the next highest number. In preparing for the next problem, we would want to clear this graph so that we don't get one graph being drawn on top of the other. And to do that, you go to the yellow second key, to the draw button above the program key, and select enter. And the graph is cleared on the TI-83. If we go back to the second bit home screen, we can clear the home screen as well. If the same problem had been given to us with a more than $22 being the question being asked, then the problem would have proceeded in very much the same way. I would have used the same z-score formula, and I can call that up on the calculator by using the second entry above the Enter key, and then second entry again above the Enter key. And here we see the modified z-score formula for the central limit theorem that we used in the first part of the problem. And when I hit Enter, of course I get the negative 1. And now the shade normal function that I would have used, again going to the second distribution, draw, enter, would have instead of being below, using the negative infinity, would have been above from more than 22, so that the first number would have been the negative 1. We always put these numbers into the shade normal function in ascending order, in other words, negative 1 being the smaller amount and then the comma, and then the calculator's understanding of positive infinity, which is engineering exponent 99. And now when I click the Enter key, that same distribution is being drawn, but only this time the area above negative 1 on the x-axis as a z-score is being shaded. And here I see that the shaded area is 0.8413, again, rounding to the nearest fourth decimal place, also called the ten thousandths place. If you were to inadvertently put the z-scores in in descending order, the area will end up being a negative quantity. But since the area is supposed to represent a probability, we would know that probability can only be a number between 0 and 1, so a negative area or a negative probability to tell us that we had done something wrong. Again, I'm going to go to the second draw button and select the enter key to clear the drawing. I'm going to go to the second quit and clear the home screen as well. Finally, if the problem had not been less than 22 or greater than 22, but instead between two dollar amounts, let's say between $22 and $24, this is how the problem would be done using the TI-83. Again, it's going to be important to use the modified z-score formula for the central limit theorem, and you need to pay specific attention again to the use of the parentheses for the numerator and denominator. I'm going to go to second function entry, then second function entry again, and here is the z-score formula that I used to find the z-score for the number 22 in this problem. When I hit enter, I get the negative 1. Now the next number that I want to find the z-score for is in the same distribution, and the only thing that's going to change is that this number 22 is going to become the number 24. Using the second function entry shortcut, I can recopy this command. And now using the up arrow, I can go to the number 2 in the number 22 and simply change it to a 4. After editing the equation in that manner, I can hit enter and the z-score for 24 is the number negative one-third, which is negative 0.3 bar or 333. Again, this is a z-score, so we'll take this to the second decimal place when we input it into the shade normal function. Going to the shade normal function, yellow second key, then the distribution button, 
right arrow and enter. Now we'll use the gray negative button, negative one, then a comma, and the gray negative button again, and the point 33. Notice we're taking the z-score to the second decimal place. When we hit enter, here I have my distribution being drawn, and the shaded area is between negative one and negative point 33 on the x-axis. These are z-scores, and the area or the probability is 0 0.2120 again taking this to four decimal places using the four in the fifth decimal place to make the decision about the zero in the fourth decimal place and since the four is less than five that zero will remain a zero had the four been a number five or more the zero would have become a 1. And that's how to use the TI-83 to do these central limit theorem problems. And again, the key to knowing that it is a central limit problem is the problem looks and sounds an awful lot like a normal distribution problem, except there's mention of a sample, in this case, a sample of 25.